نستعنه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات آمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سار على سبيله إلى يوم الدين أما بعد So inshallah ta'ala we'll uh, continue our lesson regarding uh, discussing the book uh, Bulug al-Maram by uh, man who is the author of Bulug al-Maram? Ibn Hajjah Ibn Hajjah al salami Rahimahullah So Ibn Hajjah was mentioned before the ulama of hadith uh, and of those books that he put together is this book of uh, Bulug al-Maram But bear in mind that what he did is not something that he is the first person to have started to have, to have done this So you have been at the ulama before Ibn Hajjah and after him but more so those before him who kind of somewhat uh, wrote per se, wrote, uh, wrote books regarding uh, taking particular hadith and uh, putting them in a form of a, uh, a book concerning Ahkam al uh, So as we had mentioned before also, that uh, a couple of weeks back, that what we kind of somewhat try to add to this particular lesson is that we kind of somewhat at the beginning, for a few minutes, try to add something regarding Ilm al-Usul al-Fiqh. As we discussed also in Aqwal of the Ulama, how this person come to this conclusion, so that was an idea concerning, you know, uh, regarding how sometimes the ulama may use a particular text. So you might find that uh, one text is being used, but you have different opinions using the same text. With me? So sometimes they have the text in the same delil. Everyone uses the same delil, but still they have derived or come to a different conclusion. None? So why? So this concerning, so studying why and how they come to different conclusion, uh, this is concerning going back to the science of Ilm Rasul al Fiqh. So, as we had mentioned, so we start after the Inshallah Ta'ala regarding something, a glimpse, a glimpse regarding Ilm Rasul al Fiqh, just gonna somewhat have a general idea, not going into in depth detail. As for Ilm Rasul al Fiqh, it's one of those signs that have a role in it, as a concern the science of Islam, that it is there to aid the science of Islam. So, initially, so Usul al Fiqh is more so connected to the science of Fiqh. Now, it's more so connected, so it's like Ilm al Hadith. So Ilm al-Hadith, that the thing that a person should have under his belt or should have studied the Talib al-Ilm is regarding to study, going into understanding Hadith as a general science is known also, Ilm al they refer to as Ilm al-Usul al-Hadith. So as concerning, so uh, to attain your objective of studying books of Hadith, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, then for a person to, kind of, uh, to study these books properly, then a person need to have some in, uh, self, uh, have, uh, knowledge concerning the science of Ilm al-Hadith. What is Hadith al-Mursal? What is Hadith al-Daif? What is Hadith al-Sahih? So, so that's concerned the person, preparing the person to study Ilm al-Hadith in its full uh, sense. And the same thing applies to Ilm al-Fiqh. So the science that can somewhat aid the science of Fiqh is the science of Usul al-Fiqh. So you have uh, a few signs that are there regarding this, you have Usul al-Fiqh and Qawaid al-Fiqh. There are two separate signs, but they are, they, too, they, are, they are there to serve the science of Fiqh. They are there to serve the science of fiqh. So uh, as for this particular science of concerning Ilm al-Usul al-Fiqh, uh, as for, uh, as you have many books that are in the science, a simplified definition, you have many different definitions regarding what is Ilm al-Usul al-Fiqh. So a person might ask, how one defines Ilm al-Usul al-Fiqh uh, of the various definitions that are there regarding this particular uh, science, we, it can be said, that concerning Ilm al-Usul al-Fiqh or Ilm bil Qawahid is a science that has uh, the science that relates to having these principles what Bahuth, and I mentioned include words concerning Bahuth and also research uh, uh, skills allati yatawassal biha ila istifadat or istifadat al-ahkam al-shari'ya Al-Amaliyya min adillati al-Tafsiriyya Meaning concerning the science, the meaning concerning that uh, It's the first, it's the Qawahid principles that are used uh, So the person can extract Islamic rulings from uh, the deed from the text Text by, by way of the text or by the, the, the sources that can be used So the person knowing what are those sources and how to extract uh, rulings and define what are the sources that can be used. So that's concerned the science of Ilm Usul al Fiqh. Now, so is Ilm Usul al Fiqh, it requires the person to look into four main areas regarding the science. Now, so of those areas regarding what are considered to be 
of the uh, ahkam al sharia Ahkam al sharia meaning that that thing is wajib. So concerning every act that we do, whether concerning things concerning ibadat or matters that relate to mu'amala, general affairs, uh, those action of a ruling, so those, all those things have a ruling that the Sharia are placed upon it. Whether we are aware of that or not aware of that. No? So everything the person does in the action, there is no one a ruling that is attached to it. It could be the thing that you are doing is mubah. It could be the thing that you are doing is, so mubah means something is permissible in general, no? between Kausain as they say, but the ulama of Usul al Fit now they will give you a more specific uh, definition as to what is said to be something which is wajib. When a person says this something is wajib, what do you mean by this? So they have a set meaning in the sense of Usul, usul al regarding what is meant by wajib. Because when you're saying something is wajib, no? then you're saying that, for example, the act that you're doing is a must to be carried out, and if you don't do it, of the consequence, you're a sinner. And you're, you could be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No? So you're asking the person to carry out salt, that's concerning salt. It carries, uh, uh, so there's things that are attached to it, which is a consequence regarding something being wajib. No? And a responsibility. So also, so the usul al-fiqh will define what is wajib, it will define what is, we'll say the term mustahab or slash sunnah, no? <laughs> or mandub. These are different words that I use regarding uh, what is said to be mustahab. Then you have also what is mubah. Then you have what is said to be makro. Something is disliked. You say in English something is disliked, but you say makro. And also something is haram. So all those five words, uh, they have their own definition or terminology, have their own definition. As our language, the ulama of the fiqh. None? And also then they will go to explain each of those in more details. As something being wajib, also you have wajib, which is muwassa. Sometimes you have the wajib, is something which is, uh, you have some, uh, uh, it is wasa, it is some, you have certain more leniency or more time to carry that act out. And something which is wajib, mudaik, that you only can carry that act because the time that you have is restricted. None? So they, have, then they go into more detail regarding wajib and different, different uh, levels of wajib, of things which is wajib, and other matters. So they will give you, so they will go through those things in detail, right? So the person has a general grasp of what is meant by those terms. When we say something is a shirt, a condition, for example, and uh, sometimes we said, in, to bear, bear in mind, for every science have their own what? Terminologies. So the ulama fiqh have their own terminology, the ulama of Aqeedah are certain terminology that they use and ulama of Hadith, sometimes some things, wordings, they cross over. They're, in, they're used in different signs. The same word but used in different signs but sometimes they carry different meaning. With me? So for example, a matter of like in contemporary times, a matter of the discussion that have been, uh, was under discussion now been buried. Now been, that bridge has been crossed. No? Uh, and errors have been made from various sides or from a matter regarding, for example, we said shirt is a term used by the Usu, uh, in Usul al Fiqh and the Akam al Sharia. No? So, so shirt, something is a prerequisite in English. So, so before Salat, we're doing now Wudu. Wudu is a prerequisite for Salat. So a person go and stand up and pray and he has no, and you make the best prayer. Everything is in place regarding your action. But it does not wudu, then Salat, it has no value. Because he has forfeit a, what of the condition or a shirt of the salat, which is, for example, wudu. But he's facing the Qibla, he's dressed properly, he's doing the right, he's praying the right time, everything's in place, but he does not have wudu. That means the salat is not valid. Because he did not fulfill all the prerequisite, those things that are, has to be done before you actually commence that action of salat. So for example, a shirt. Of well, a few years back, a discussion regarding, and some fall into errors inside this, and even books are translated, you find errors in those kind of translation regarding this matter. Is action a prerequisite, a shirt regarding al iman? That'll be complicated maybe for some. 
But that's not. Does an act, action is a prerequisite regarding your Iman. That, right? Does the person have to carry out? So some people mention that uh, action is a shart al-kamal wa shart al sahar And one of the books in translation in English, they went into, they discussed this in depth. But they made an error. A famous book in Akida been translated with a person in translating this, that view was among some of the some of the Shabab, but that was an error. But they translated because at that time it seemed to be the view. But then found out that that view was not that was that view was incorrect. Even so the Mashiach made error in that matter, and they themselves kind of somewhat uh, came back on that view. No? But at that time you found all the books were being translated, so it was captured in some of those <coughs> translated books in Akida. Nam, uh, some of the people I think they're from England themselves who translated those books. Uh, you understand? So sometimes the word shirt was used, you understand, in the understanding of the Usuli in matters concerning Aqidah. So there was a lapse, a confusion, because you're using a terminology that may be in one science, in another science, how they understand in the other science, so you fell into error. Now understanding that terminology sometimes are used different in various science. None. So people fell into error sometimes so that general thing that sometimes one can fall into error by applying something outside of its science as applied in another science. So the Ulama so says that Esau so said but, but uh, go back so usul it figures as its own terminologies. Understanding in the mindset of a usuli. Right? So, uh, <coughs> so said that concerns they have, those things will be covered in Usul al Fiqh. When was this particular matter laid to rest? Recently? Yeah, we say after what, a couple years ago, it came to rest. Everybody then understood uh, mm -hmm. the correct view. So, was that an error made in the translation or the shield? No, 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 error in understanding. That, that the person who was translating a particular book in Akira mm -hmm. that he wanted to elaborate on a particular matter, but the, uh, the source that he used to elaborate from was also itself incorrect. Mm, okay. You understand? Mm. But then taken to be then the correct view, but after the matter was discussed and clarified by the Kibar and the Sheikh, then it was understood that there were some errors from uh, from some quarters. Uh, but ala kulli uh, hal so that's now with Usul, so that's one year Usul al-Fiqh. Another year regarding concerning Masadir at tashrir What are the sources that are used can be used as evidence? So we have the Kitab, the Sunnah, the uh, Al-Ijma, the Qiyas. So they will identify the sources that are agreed upon. Then you have another set of sources that are under discussion. Some may use it, some may not use it as a delil. Qawl al-Sahabi, or Matab al-Sahabi, is that a hujjah? So some of those things, outside those four, some of those uh, are other sources that maybe are discussed some may use it today and some still may not accept to be a delil. So for example, amongst the Sheikh of Yansan, Qawlu Sahabi, some accept to be a delil and some don't accept to be a delil. Even today. You with me? So even so, a Sahabi may have a, uh, have a view, but your view may be that if a Sahabi have a view, and his view is somewhat, yeah, uh, we discussed for, but you all that, of, the call of a Sahabi is a hujja, you understand? Then for you, it becomes binding upon you to accept their view on certain matters. But for the person who doesn't have the view, it's not binding upon him. Because that's not his view. It may be for him a preferred thing to be done, but it's not binding upon him, but it may be binding upon a person who says it's a must. So both persons might be looking at it from different perspectives. Do you have to be cons consistent? If you say the call of the, the Sahaba... Yeah, you have to go to consistent, and that's what you owe to be yeah, so, so you have to go with that? Yeah, he said, so that becomes yeah. binding upon you. Mm -hmm. You understand? He said, with also to be discussed, when it is to be applied, then of that. So some, but sometimes, that, so those are things that, so those things that are discussed. You understand? So when you're reading the book to the Ulama, you can understand why is, where they're coming from. You understand where they're coming from because of what they may hold to be a hujja and what they do not hold to be an hujja. So the person will go through those things, then the person can through concerning concerns now, uh, how to concern istimbat, how to extract ruling, which is concerns now the fine area of ilmul usul al fiqh. 
how do I use I will just consider the hadith of Fusenza that concerns the first hadith that we mentioned regarding Laula Ashok ala ummati la amartuhum bi sawa ma kulli wudhu so they look at these wordings and they all now discuss that everyone agree upon the hadith but may come to different conclusion based upon the wording of that hadith because how they understand the wording and how they are used Naam? so you find this a lot so you find uh, so you find a book for example a book like here yeah, so you find this that occurs a lot then also a thing concerning how to identify with the important of Sulfur who are the people who are equipped to can come to their own conclusion who the person is the alim that we can rely upon him and refer to him now understand so usul fiqh now understand and identify who is that person is an alim that he becomes like a person that we can refer back to in matters that need some clarity or need some detailed research and also it will discuss concerning uh, when two alim, two mujtahid differ, what should be your approach? So I give you all those tools to work with regarding how to look at things and also how to deal with matter when there is difference. Nam, uh, so that's concerning Ibn Usul al-Fiqh. Ibn Usul al-Fiqh in contemporary, uh, in latter day time, amongst in particular, uh, who say the Salafi community, Nam, has been put somewhat to among some, uh, among some wasn't given his full attention as it should. Be reason being that Imam Sulufik, Imam Shafi Rahimullah, the one who wrote them, the first book that came to us regarding Imam Sulufik, Imam Shafi Rahimullah, a book called Al Risala, that discussed some of the points of Sulufik, not everything, because in early stage of any science, you don't get everything. Now, so he discussed things that were maybe uh, relevant then in his, the second era, uh, during the second uh, century, then after then the science was somewhat developed. Like in most science, it started out as in a certain way, then kind of somewhat developed. But as in Usul al uh, developed, it was somewhat uh, captured by those people, given a lot of attention by people who were of Asha'ira, viewpoints and also itizan so those madahi are somewhat there like al-ghazali it is uh, the mu'tazila oh. you understand we'll give a lot of so those people are somewhat so uh, ashaira matrudiya uh, the mu'tazila they, they gave a, uh, in Usul, uh, in Usul, a lot of attention and wrote a lot on that topic so a lot of their false principles were introduced into usul al-fiqh so some of their false principles were introduced into Ibn al-Usul al-Fiqh. So a lot of their books, you have to know how to navigate through those books of Ghazali, Al-Hamidi, Nam, and many others. But their books became the standard, the main books, even though you have to know to, get, to navigate through those books. Nam, so a lot of people are somewhat, they turned away from those books because of the people who were, uh, who give that attention. So you find Allah said if some of either Sunnah can somewhat turned away from but they find other the ulama like uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim al jawzi in his book Alam Waqeen, uh, Ash-Shatibi, in his book Al-Muwafaqat, Nam, Ash-Shinkiti, uh, and others who try to put the science back to its proper place. Clear? But those things that are the things that they can somewhat throw in that have not to do with Sulfi, they can somewhat, they can somewhat try to remove those things from the sense of Imam Sulfi and put things back in its proper order. Now, so you find some efforts were made and today's time you find other scholars of either Sunnah or people of Sunnah who understand Akhidah that they able can somewhat put things back on track to some degree. Now, so we have books that we can use now regarding Usul al-Fiqh but we said no, if I many doesn't give it its true attention as it should and that affects concerning a personal understanding of how to navigate through Akam Sharia. Now, uh, and those who don't have this tool will make many mistakes. Those who do not have this tool, then they will make a lot of errors regarding Akam, especially concerning in contemporary time, where a lot of stuff is new that requires a person who's well-grown in Sulu if he doesn't have this tool, 
you will make a lot of mistakes. No? Uh, so, so in Usul al Fiqh, uh, as I mentioned, you know, the other shubahat is that it was somewhat a uh, lot of people of Ali al Kalam made, uh, did works in that field, also uh, entered into science of Usul Fiqh, which had nothing to do with it to serve their own purpose and their own objective. But now, alhamdulillah, some of the people of the ulama have tried to, uh, to uh, cl uh, clarify some of those uh, masahis. So, no? so uh, that's concerning Ibn Rasul al-Fiqh no? and its importance and its place. The important of Rasul al-Fiqh, it helps the person, the person that's skilled regarding one to understand the ulama and how they come to conclusion for the person who's a starter, to some degree, for the person to understand how the kalam of the ulama and why they come to certain conclusions because you <coughs> understand Ilm Usul al Fiqh. Also, for Usul, usul al Fiqh, is of those signs that it's a must, they discuss concerning them, a sign the person must have a portion of Usul al Fiqh to understand Fiqh correctly. You must have Ilm Usul al Fiqh to understand and how to use Fiqh properly. If without it, then you cannot understand Fiqh properly. You will be somewhat all over the place. Now, I give you set rules that you follow. Now, and guidelines that you use. So if you have those things in place, then you know, as we said, you know to stay in your lane because you have the, the principles that you work with all the time. Now, so you don't just use this when it suits and you use this one. It doesn't work like that in those science. Those rules are somewhat set and you apply them accordingly. Now, and they also to know when to apply which rule to what situation. Okay, you might find apply a rule to a situation that it doesn't apply in this case. But in your opinion, it does, but that's not the case. Because you don't know when to apply it, which rule, to what situation and circumstance. Like a doctor, the person that, that you're applying, giving a certain type of medication, but that's not for that illness. You with me? So the person will know those things. Also, it most will affect that it helps the person regarding new things that we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. Because you may not find a specific text but with Usul al Fiqh, you have Kawal Usul that you can now apply the same thing. You can apply those rules to whatever situation you're facing in contemporary times. Uh, and also for a person to be deemed a true Mujtahid, he needs Usul al Fiqh. He becomes upon him a mas. For the person to be a Mujtahid, then he's required to be a man in the sense of Usul al Fiqh. Because he cannot achieve attain being a mujtahid unless you, are, you understand these principles. Okay, you might have a person that is good in fiqh in the sense of he have just memorized a book in fiqh. So he memorized Bulugu Maram but he doesn't know to use it. So a person might have memory, a lot of stuff, but it doesn't mean that you know how to apply things. You're just another copy. You're just a recording. Now that's a different It doesn't mean a person will record, memorize things that he knows how to apply things. Uh, that he has memorized. It'll become another book. It'll become another book. You with me? So, uh, as we discuss further concerning, next we will discuss concerning what is wajib, what is mustahab, and the likes. So, back now to our book, uh, Al Bulugh Maram, that uh, we started with Arthur Rahimullah ibn Hajar regarding as Siwak. Now, as we mentioned, that uh, of the, let's say, Sunnah al Adab. Regarding of wudu, that uh, he discussed, uh, discussed concerning the use of al miswak, as siwak. Uh, other thing that we will dis uh, discuss concerning siwak, as some mentioned regarding that at what point in a tahara wudu the person should use al miswak? Is it during the process of making wudu or before? They say most of the hadith that have come to us by, by the Prophet Islam regarding uh, make use of miswak regarding wudu is not while doing the act but before the act of wudu so most of the hadith more indicate that it was done before not during the actual act and those who say during the act is at the time of the person uh, making madmada or eastin shak but there's not much delil for that the delil more is in line that is done before he actually commence start the act of uh, wudu that he would use the the miswak then after then even hajj rahimullah he discussed uh, the hadith that uh, comes next, uh, the second hadith, the hadith of Umran ibn Hussein. Uh, regarding this matter, the hadith of Umran, 
that uh, discusses concerning the hadith of Uthman that give us a general view, one of those hadith that give us a, uh, a overall view of concerning Sifatul Salat. So the hadith of Uthman ibn Affan that he described concerning Kayfiyatul Wudu with uh, more so, and the hadith that I like also, the wajibat acts of wudu concerning that uh, washing the face, washing the mouth, the nose, also the hands, also concerning the legs and wiping off the, the head, not per se that all of it, uh, covering most of those uh, particular uh, matters. So we we'll discuss concerning most of those matters regarding of the wajibat, regarding al wudu. Uh, so with that, uh, then we discuss, we discuss the hadith of Ali, the third hadith, we started that one, Urm Kal. So the hadith of Uthman we discussed, and also says we discussed the hadith of Uthman, isn't it? We ended it, isn't it? We discussed, started the hadith of Ali regarding wiping off the head. We recall where we stopped, or to which hadith? Uh, since no one recall. Uh, so we'll continue with the hadith of uh, Uthman, as I mentioned, until he discussed most of the main points regarding al, uh, al wudu regarding of the wajibat of wudu regarding the main acts of wudu regarding the wajibat of uh, al wudu So from the hadith of also the mention that al rahimahullah, he mentioned that from this hadith, that uh, our general had concerns that, that of those matters regarding of washing of the limbs once, twice, that he mentioned now Rahimahullah Ghusl Badha Thalatha Badha Marratain that regarding concerning that washing of the limbs of wudu that uh, it can be done once is wajib second is mustahab and third and three times is afdal and you shouldn't exceed three. So to wash any of the limbs three times, then that's the best thing to be done. To do it twice is okay, and to do it once, but if the person do, for example, wash the arm once, to ensure that everything is washed. So if you do it once, then you have to ensure that everything is washed. So the more ideal thing, all I mentioned, the person do it three times to ensure that everything is done correctly. Now the person, so you find that some of the older now they mentioned that uh, they dislike for the old man to, for, for the man to do marra, marra to wash the limbs once. So the old man they dislike for another alim to wash the limbs of wudu once. Reason being that a person was an army, a general person might see him and fall him and don't know to do it properly. Got it? So that's what I said with Philip. So it can be done by the person to ensure that that part of the limb is washed properly. None. Uh, so that's concerning uh, that matter also in the times. In some times you could, for example, wash the face twice, wash the right hand twice, the left hand three times. That also is permissible. So the first example, so it doesn't mean that if you do it, everything has to be done three times. You can do something twice, some parts three times. The main thing that everything, that area is covered regarding water, uh, touched all the ears that need to be washed. Now, uh, as for exceeding three times regarding washing the limbs three times, nakala that na rahimullah nakala ijma ala karahiya ziyada ala thalatha. That is something which is dislike and dislike in sense here concerning haram is something. Uh, not to be done regarding the personal washing the limbs uh, exceeding three times. Uh, which the Hadith Hassan, they mentioned, so you have uh, uh, that matter. So that's concerning of... Uh, and uh, some of the ulama, they mentioned, for example, Ibn Mubarak, he mentioned لا آمن إذا زاد في الوضوء على ثلاثة أن يأثم. That he is not is uh, not uh, secure. He feels secure concerning that the person that uh, exceed washing the limbs more than three times and that that person is falling into a sin. 
Uh, so can some ulama can somewhat Turkey can somewhat uh, as a shadid regarding exceeding washing the names uh, more than three times. Also from the Hadith of Uthman, it shows regarding that term sometimes some acts that term is best to be demonstrated for a learner, for the beginner. So Uthman, he can somewhat ask for uh, the water to be brought to him, then he can somewhat show the person how to perform wudu, carry out act himself. So sometimes for beginners, especially concerning our environment, that we got a person who's like a new Muslim, rather than a person explain to them words how to make wudu, it may be easier to show them. Maybe easier to show them, demonstrate how to do it, because when you try to tell them, they're trying to grasp, wash your face, wash this, you get confused. For a new person who just took a shahada and try to explain to them how to pray and how to make wudu, you're gonna lose it. So sometimes maybe best to demonstrate to the person how to do the act, take him onto the place of wudu, the ma'ana, and the show him how wudu is done. That may be a better system in teaching a person who's uh, new to Islam. So Uthman Rada al Anhu, he used the method of teaching practical demonstration regarding the act of al wudu. Uh, so after the next hadith, A, which is Hadith of Ali, what it says? Regarding the description of the ablution of the Prophet, وسلم, he, the Prophet, وسلم, wiped his head with wet hands one time, reported by Abu Dawood, and the Sa'i and Tirmidhi reported it with a Sahir Sanat, authentic chain of the writers. A Tirmidhi said, it's That's the in most, your book? Yeah, it's okay. the most authentic hadith on this subject. Was there an addition added? Hey, my book doesn't have all of that. Or one of my books. Hey, so uh, this hadith that uh, is mentioned here regarding concerning this matter concerning that uh, the hadith of uh, Abu Dawood and uh, this particular hadith also of those hadith and someone goes into detail uh, give an explanation of uh, Sivat al wudu but uh, even Hadith Rahimullah he mentioned a portion of this a portion of the hadith of Ali so he didn't mention the full hadith but he just mentioned uh, what uh, this particular hadith the part that he, uh, what he needed which concerning that taqal masaha bi wahida that he wiped his head once that he wiped his head uh, uh, once so it's hadith of the hadith of uh, Ali ibn Abi Talwa ta'ala anhu that uh, gave a description concerning al, uh, al wudu but uh, Ibn Hajj Rahimullah didn't wish to mention the entire hadith but he just mentioned the portion regarding uh, that uh, additional uh, uh, part of the hadith that was not mentioned in the previous hadith which is masaha bi ra'sihi wahid that uh, the amount of time that the head is to be wiped so the hadith of Uthman didn't mention that whether once, twice or three times now, so in this hadith it specified that wiping the head is to be done once uh, with this matter that uh, the hadith mentioned here that uh, wiping the head uh, is once uh, so based upon this uh, it shows concern that you know the amount of time that a person is to wipe his head regarding uh, al wudu is to be done once it's to be uh, done uh, once. Then the next discussion between the ulama regarding uh, the permissibility. So generally concerning all is in agreement regarding wiping the head once. And we discuss concerning, and the next hadith will come concerning how to go about doing it. The next hadith will come, discuss concerning how to go about wiping the head. With this discussion regarding how many times to wipe the head. Some narration of Abu Dawood, it mentioned that uh, the ha the, that uh, the Hadith of Uthman, that some narration mentioned, that he wiped his head three times. Wiped his head three times. But the ulama have a discussion regarding that 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 uh, most or that 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 part of the Hadith is not authentic. But Sheikh Al-Bani ordered to be 
authentic uh, type. Uh, so that's a discussion regarding uh, many of the ulama hold that part of not to be authentic, but uh, we find some who hold it to be authentic regarding wiping the head three times. Uh, and uh, based upon this, that you find that the ulama of the Shafi'iyah, they are of that view. The ulama of the Shafi'iyah, they are upon uh, that uh, view regarding wiping the head uh, three times. Then also they use concern of Hadith of Uthman, some of you mentioned, Ra'itu Ari'ikum al-Wudhu Al-Wudhu al-Islam Thumma yitawadda thalata thalata So they mentioned that to know that I want to show you how to do the proper Islam How we perform Wudhu They mentioned Thumma yitawadda thalata thalata You make Wudhu three times three times But he didn't specify So they mentioned in general three times three uh, thrice But he ordered to mean in everything Including wiping the head But that Hadith is authentic But the one that specified three times uh, we mentioned that it's under discussion. Uh, Allah Alam, uh, I'm of the view that it is not authentic. Of those who mentioned it is not authentic, but you mentioned that uh, Shaykh Al Bani Rahimullah, that uh, he owes it to be uh, authentic, and uh, that also go back to a person called Amir ibn Shakik, that one of the narration Amir Shakik regarding is this person. Uh, there's some discussion regarding with the short term that uh, uh, the person somewhat is uh, hey, so there's some discussion is laying in hadith so the person who is laying in hadith uh, so generally you understand so a person who for example with ilm al-hadith a person to accept his hadith if he's of a high standard nam, then generally he's accepted then you find certain people on a level where, for example, he's laying in hadith, he's like Alpha, uh, the lower middle branch. With me? So you have the people on the highest level, the thikat. Then you have those people who are below them, in between, and you have ones who are daif. With me? So you have certain, but the people in those that in the middle section, the hadith are sometimes classed to be Hassan. Type. But the ones in the middle section, they are also different levels. So you have the higher level of them, and you have them. You said that the middle class, higher middle class, and lower middle class. Type. So those lower middle class, if they come with something which is contrary to what everyone else is saying, do you accept it? You with me? So that become a discussion between concerned in the hadith of a person of a certain law that we use as of a lower middle class. Can we accept things that he's saying that no one else is saying or he contradicts others? Now, So you find that that's the area where some discussion, some people might accept that lower middle class if he said something that no one is saying, that, that seemed to be outright contradicting others. Now, but for some, because he's a lower middle class, anything that he says that is, cannot be substantiated by anyone or any principle, then they dismiss him. Clear? So you have that discussion. Uh, so sometimes you might find that, uh, so that's concerned sometimes the ear of discussion regarding certain individuals, if they, because of, uh, if they were to say or mention in the hadith that not many others, or no one is the same, but they are the only ones saying it. Can we accept this from them? Uh, or not? Especially, say, find even sometimes a person, maybe thikat, and sometimes a person who maybe you said in the, the middle class. The thikat of a certain level, yes. And in the lower middle class, then it needs to be looked into more thoroughly. And in most cases, you might find those who may. Uh, they may be very cautious about accepting from the middle class things that they say that no one else is saying. Type, but that's the next matter, Ilm al Hadith. Now, so it's just with this matter, depending on the view that you take, depending on how your outcome would be. Now, so my friends, the ulama may accept certain statements from some people who are the middle class that are saying things that others are not saying, but they follow that principle. With me, but as for them, if they owe that, yes, we accept from those people, then you have to follow through that principle. 
If you say no, then you have to follow through that principle also. And it means you might reject a hadith that others, that the other person may accept, you may reject their hadith. Type. So you might find it in contemporary time, for example, Sheikh Albani, you might find others may differ, disagree with him based upon some of those principles, based upon uh, uh, how some of those principles are understood and applied. And sometimes Sheikh Albani may accept from people whom that was said of that class where they are under take or not take from them. He may take from them, and if I have done before, like Ahmed Shakir, but others may not. So they, their conclusion will differ. Type. Uh, so concerning that matter, the hadith is under discussion, and we mentioned, you know, that uh, some dismiss the hadith or reject the hadith regarding wiping the head three times. Uh, and those who accept the hadith and the old visit, something which is permissible can be done. It is something which is permissible, can be done. Uh, so we have that uh, discussion. Uh, <coughs> so majority of the hadith regarding Uthman and others regarding uh, Sifat al-Wudu, they mention in most of the hadith wiping the head once. That's the majority of the hadith. Nam, and the ones concerned the hadith concerning uh, Amr ibn Shakir, that uh, himself may be uh, acceptable to a degree, but their class is concerned the hadith of being shad, where the person is acceptable, but in this particular case, we can't accept your case. We can't accept your narration. That hadith is called shad. So the person sometimes is acceptable, but in particular case, he may be rejected. And those hadith that are rejected from that person, it is referred to as shad. Nam? Uh, so they will distinct and uh, they will reject the hadith based upon it to be classed as shaz. Nam. Uh, so that's concerning that uh, matters of hadith. I will mention wiping the head is uh, once. Uh, and the sifa will discuss the next hadith of Abdullah ibn Zaid ibn Asim. Aywa. Narrated Abdullah bin Zayd bin Asim an, regarding the description of ablution, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wiped his head from the forehead back up to, but not including the nape of the neck, and then back to the forehead with his two right hands agreed upon. And also after? And in number of narration of days, he began from the front of his head and took his wet hands to the back of his head and then return them to the place where he started from. Hey, right. so this hadith also, this uh, hadith also again of uh, Abdullah ibn Zayd ibn Asim also again wrote al is discussed concerning matter regarding uh, aspect of the wudu. And in this particular case, Ibn Hajar rahimullah bring the hadith to explain regarding how the person go about wiping the head. So discussed before concerning the general needs to be done, but then the question now is how it is to be done. Uh, so that's what the hadith can somewhat clarify concerning how it is to be done. And he mentioned uh, regarding concerning Sifat al-Wudu, Qala Masa Birasi, wipe his head, for Akbal be a day, so use both hands from the front, the forehead, then down to the back, and then brought it back. Now, so that's concerning the method of doing it. By way of the Sunnah. So he said, wiping the head is that way as described in the Sunnah uh, in this particular uh, hadith. Uh, that is mentioned here. So wiping the head once would be the hands is wet, put to the fire both hands, that cover the entire head, back, down to the back of the head, uh, and then the person come back from where he started. He returns from where he started. And that move, that act, that motion of back and forth is considered to be once. So that considered as twice. So doing it one back and forth, that's one act. That's considered to be one act regarding al-wudu. So that's concerning as this uh, hadith uh, mentioned regarding this particular uh, matter. And the hadith asl in Bukhara Muslim uh, as mentioned regarding uh, this particular description concerning al-wudu. And we mentioned before that uh, then the ulama, the discussion regarding that, uh, they discussed concerning that uh, this hadith mentioned both hands, but before we are discussing uh, discuss the matter regarding that term, 
uh, those who hold that the entire head is to be white and those who hold that part of the head, a portion of it is to be white now, then those who hold that uh, a portion is to be white of the head then between themselves they have a difference what percentage is it? some say a third some say a fourth so you have that discussion between themselves now, regarding uh, uh, how much of the head is to be white but from the description of this hadith it shows that the Prophet of Islam that he wiped his entire head the only time that he wiped a portion of the head is when he was wearing the imam as we mentioned before so he wiped the head and also the imam other than this that whenever he wiped the bare head it will be the entire head would be white not per se with uh, a portion but the entire head would be would be white Then I mentioned that regarding this particular sifat, it is something which is uh, the sunnah way of doing it. Based upon the hadith, they mention here Sheikh Fawzan mentioned that this is Abdullah Fawzan. Huh? We don't get confused. So Abdullah Fawzan, in his explanation of uh, uh, Guru Mura, mentions no concerns. No, that's the sunnah way of doing it. Because the person was to start from the back and it's still considered to be he have done what is required, but he have done khilaf al sunnah. You understand? So the sunnah way is to do it as described, front to the back and then back. The person, by whatever reason, started from back, come to the front and then went back. He still have completed what is masaras. I wiped his head, but khilaf sunnah. Done it in contrary to the way of the sunnah. But he has done what is still required from him. Uh, Then also he discussed concerning the general thing that uh, so the main thing concerning the whole community the person tried to wipe all of the head or his hand pass over his entire head that's the main thing regarding this particular uh, matter and also regarding this matter that uh, the ruling for men and women is the same the ruling regarding male and female is the same regarding uh, wiping over the head or wiping over the hair it is something which is uh, what is applied, the same thing is required regarding female. Some of the ulama, they make a distinction regarding how the woman is to wipe her hair. No? But there is nothing but uh, uh, they mention concern that, uh, that uh, but in this case, concerning what applies to man applies to uh, female, the narration in, in Nasa'i that he mentioned, and Ashrat al Anha, that she mentioned, Wafihi, Wadahat Yadiha, that she placed her hand ala on the front of her head, Thumma Masaha Rasiha. Then she wiped her head uh, once, going to the back. So she put her hand from the same place and then just kind of somehow wiped her head. That's for the, the female. Uh, so I showed concerns. No, that way it can be done where the female start from the top, from the forehead, and go wipe to the back, and she doesn't have to come back. Now, uh, if she wish to come back as the man, she can do so. But with Aisha, she just wiped one, uh, go uh, from the front and to the back. And that was sufficient. Now, uh, if she wished to come back forward like the man, then that's also not a problem. Uh, as in the case of man. So that's concerning that particular hadith, regarding that particular matter, regarding uh, Mas al Ras. And as I mentioned before regarding that uh, if the person has long hair, whether male or female, now, then the person doesn't need to uh, go, you understand what the entire of that, pass down over the entire hair. So she has for now, female hair, she goes down to her, to her back. That means she has to wipe, you understand, put in front of her and wipe everything. <laughs> now, it's just to from the forehead down to the, to the neck area and that's it. That's the part that needs to be to be wiped. Then, uh, allow the name. Hey, did he call the other? Or he left? It's called. 
Ah, okay. You call it? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Oh, you call it Arkham or something. Ah, okay. Uh, and then we go to. Oh, we'll go to next to Hadith. That's now 8.15. I'll try and read it, but I don't have my glasses, so someone has to take over. <laughs> uh, Narrated by Abdullah bin Amr, Radiallahu anh, regarding the description of the evolution. Then he allows. Messenger Asalaam wiped his head, inserted the index fingers into his ears, and wiped the exterior of his ears with his thumbs. Reported by Abu Dawood and and Nisa'i, even Kudayma greeted it Sahih, authentic. Then uh, of the thing that Ibn Hajj rahimahullah also discussed regarding matters relating to al wudu al-Tahara, regarding uh, al-Mas, al was the name. So concerning this particular uh, hadith that he brought regarding to discuss concerning, of those matters discussed regarding the uh, wudu is uh, wiping of the, uh, the other name, which is the, the ears. And uh, so he mentioned a hadith here of uh, Abdul ibn uh, Amr, that uh, is concerning this particular uh, matter. There is some uh, little discussion or some uh, hadith here in general concerning this particular hadith that uh, he mentions here. That uh, hey, they mentioned the hadith, even Khuzaim Rahimullah, the hadith to be uh, Sahih. Uh, a little discussion regarding the hadith, but over the hadith, it is to be Hassan, the hadith that uh, says still concerning the hadith of uh, an acceptable uh, degree or grading where the hadith is deemed to be uh, some or to be Sahih and some or the hadith to be, to be uh, Hassan regarding. Uh, this particular uh, matter regarding wiping over the, the ears. So the hadith uh, that we mentioned is uh, the hadith uh, in the Ibn Abu Dawood, when Nasahi, or even Khuzayma. Uh, so from this particular hadith, then uh, it's of those uh, 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 matter that uh, are a proof regarding that uh, wiping of the ears is a part of the act of wudu. So wiping of the ears is uh, of those uh, uh, acts that's related to al al wudu. They mentioned question as for the hukum regarding mas al uzanain. So regarding what's the ruling regarding uh, uh, to wipe the ears that uh, jumhur of the ulama that they all that is something which is mustahab. Regarding wiping the ears, jumhur of the ulama, they all is something which is mustahab. And they all concerned is mustahab based upon that the Prophet he did it by way of his action. Uh, and uh, so that's concerned that you know, he did by way of action and that wiping of the ears uh, is not mentioned in the ayah. Not mentioned in the, the ayah. So the whole that you know, it is something which is uh, mustahab to be done. Then uh, with this matter regarding wiping as Jumhur, uh, Ibn Khudama rahimullah of the Hanabila in his book Al Mughni he called Al Uthinan min al Ras that uh, the ears, both ears are from the, the head. Well, Qiyas al Mathab and also Qiyas of the Mathab of the Hanabila, Wajub Masahuma Mal Mas, that uh, it is something which is because wiping the hair is wajib, that they all that wiping the ears is wajib based upon Qiyas. So for them, because the 
uh, the ears take the ruling of the head, then the oh, that if the head wiping is wajib, then wiping the ears is wajib. Now, so as I mentioned, al qiyas al mathab wajub mathuma ma mas. So that's concerning after us. So that's concerning that particular. So you have the, that view that all oh, that is wajib to do uh, to be done regarding wiping of the the ears. And all concerned is not that uh, the, the ears, it follows the, as some hadith mentioned, the hadith under discussion, but uh, that's concerning that their view, that, that the, the ears, that uh, it takes the ruling of the, wiping of the, uh, the head. So that's the view of the ulama, pertains to that matter. Uh, and the author here can somewhat, uh, and now we can say that, uh, that they are all concerned that uh, wiping of the ears that is something according to the author of uh, our book uh, not uh, falls on the other who's Fatul Alam that they are all concerned that it's not Qawl Raj that it is Qawl Jumhur is more in line with the Qawl of Jumhur that wiping of the ears is Mustahab not Wajib but the Hanabila that they all is something which is Wajib to be done wiping the ears it is Wajib to be done And as the hadith described concerning the method of Awdada, the way in which a person should wipe his ears, then he used uh, Sababa, which would be these two ones. They go inside and uh, Ibham, this is the Ibham, Ibham, that is the one that goes outside. So wipe the out, and this one, the Sababa, the one with the teeth and the Tashahud, this one, it goes in, and this one, it goes outside. So that's concerning the description as mentioned in the hadith. That's the description as mentioned in the hadith regarding uh, wiping of the ears. Sababa, what's the other name? Sababa wa ibham. 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 That's the, the thumb. So Ibham, they just put inside and go back and forward again. Yeah. Hey, so hey, so the person, so, hey, so the person after that, then you go in, and then that one out. The, they discuss a matter concerning the person, Mas al The person was to wipe thus the ears without the head. Would that be sufficient? The person, hey, so la uh, yunsi. So something this that's an ijma that uh, is not sufficient as to wipe the ears without the head. It's not sufficient. Based upon the view of the Jumhur, if the person was about the head without the ears, it's still valid. But based upon the Hanabila, that if the person uh, is a mus, that after wiping the, the head, he still must have to wipe his ears. But with Jumhur, if wiping uh, the person didn't wipe his ears, his wudu is still valid. His wudu is still valid. Uh, so that's concerning that particular uh, then discuss concerning our uh, next matter and next hadith so that's concerning those hadith and that's kind of that uh, So that's concerning those Masai that relates that hadith concerning wiping of the head and wiping of the, the ears that uh, the author Rahimullah which to kind of somewhat uh, mentioned as the hadith of Uthman did mention it in this detail. The next thing to be discussed concerning matter concerning going back in concerning istinshaq wal al mudmada. So also discuss also that particular matter regarding in some more detail that you'll go into some more detail regarding discussing concerning Eastern Shaqwa al Mahmudah regarding place white man placing what in the mouth and also in the, the nose. So it goes a little more detail regarding how it's to be done uh, regarding that particular uh, matter. So that's the next discussion. So inshallah we end here and uh, discuss that matter uh, in the next lesson inshallah regarding the matter relating to Al Istin Sa wa Istin Shaq wal Mahmudah.